Since Swin Dynamics launched the first launch monitor to really gain traction in 1996, terms like club or swing speed, ball speed, launch angle, spin rate and so on have taken a firm hold in golf conversations. And that's because they have enabled coaches and pros and now everyday golfers to understand the role these factors play in why players hit the ball the way they do and crucially in the modern game, driving distance. All golfers should therefore now be aware that they need to drive the ball with the ideal launch angle and spin rate, in other words the right launch conditions, to drive the ball as far as they can. But what are the ideal launch conditions for amateurs that will help them get the maximum possible distance off the tee? In this video we take a look at the data and find out. Welcome back to the Golfing Focus channel everybody and according to Trackman the ideal launch angle and spin rate for the average male amateur hitting driver are 14.7 degrees and 2300 rpm. These optimal launch conditions are based on the average man's driver club head speed of 93.4 miles an hour and attack angle of minus 1.6 degrees both of which have a big effect on the ideal mix of launch angles and spin rates for each golfer. As everybody knows, however, there is no such thing as the average golfer in a game filled with seemingly endless variables and golf swings which are as unique to individuals as their fingerprints. As we now explore the ideal launch conditions for individual players and what numbers will let you hit the ball as far as you can with your driver, it is therefore vital to remember that your launch angle and spin rate should not be looked at in isolation. Together, they undoubtedly make up two of the three key factors that affect driver distance, however understanding them in the context of other key metrics from launch monitors is essential for maximising your driver distance and lowering your scores. Put simply, to hit your drive the maximum possible distance requires not only the best launch angle and spin rate, but also an ideal ball speed. And the optimal mix of these is different for each golfer and dictated by their driver, club head, stroke swing speed and attack angle at impact. Taking launch angles first though, that different angles are better for driving distance for different golfers depending on their swing speed is superbly demonstrated by this Trackman chart, where they highlight what the best launch angle would be for players with driver swing speeds from 75 to 125 miles an hour if they all hit their drives with a zero degree attack angle. As we can clearly see, golfers with faster club head speeds who are wanting to maximise their driver carry distance should be aiming for a launch angle that is much lower than those who swing at slower speeds. It also requires them to hit the ball with less spin, but let's continue to focus on launch angles for the moment before we come to spin rates in more detail shortly. Players with slower swing speeds by comparison need a higher launch angle as a result of there being less lift, what makes the golf ball rise, and drag, what slows the golf ball down on the ball at lower speeds. And the reason therefore why all golfers should not simply be aiming for an ever higher launch angle number is because for maximum distance off the tee we obviously not only want to carry the ball as far as possible but also get as much roll as possible for a maximum total distance. Hit the ball with a launch angle that's too low for your swing speed and you will not carry the ball very far and your roll distance will also be reduced by the constant friction with the turf. It is not possible, therefore, to give one single best launch angle number for the most distance that applies to everyone, because it must be combined with the second piece of the right launch conditions puzzle, namely spin rate. As we now know, hitting your driver with a ball speed matched with the right launch conditions is key to maximising both the carry and total distance you hit the golf ball. And if we now focus on the second part of the launch condition equation, spin rate, which is a measure of the amount of spin on the golf ball immediately after impact, Trackman's data in this table shows that the average male amateur hits drives with too high a spin rate compared to what is optimal and partly as a result of this loses 24 yards of carry and 29 yards of total distance. Again we must emphasise that spin rate numbers, as with launch angle data, should not be considered in isolation, but this analysis helps to highlight the general rule that more spin with your driver will reduce the distance you will hit the ball. But beyond the data, why does spin rate matter at all in practical terms when it comes to distance? Every time you use a golf club, it imparts backspin, a spin rate on the golf ball, as it makes contact simply due to there being loft in it. Then as the loft of the club you use increases, so does the spin rate number. And a high spin rate typically means your ball will not roll very far, which then makes it perfect sense for us to use our wedges to pitch and chip with, as they are the clubs that produce the most spin and therefore don't run very far when they hit the green. 
but with driver, when we're looking to hit the ball as far as we can, that's not ideal, and why we don't want to have high spin rate numbers, or high amounts of backspin when it comes to our tee shots as we want the ball to roll out as much as possible, to add to the carry distance we hit it. But as we keep saying, and as every golfer is very aware, each swing is different, and therefore everyone hits their driver with a slightly different angle of attack and launch angle, both of which are directly connected to spin rate. And given the data we saw on the previous Trackman chart, the ideal spin rates change as the swing speed changes. To maximise distance, therefore, slower driver swing speeds, which typically result in slower ball speeds, need higher spin rates to ensure the ball stays airborne for longer, while the higher ball speeds closely linked with higher club head speeds require lower spin rates to reduce drag in the golf ball. All things being equal, more swing speed will also increase spin rate, but driver spin rates are also hugely impacted by the area in the club face that you actually strike the ball, with high spin numbers usually caused by golfers striking the ball on the top of the club face and or towards the heel. By comparison, hitting the ball in the centre or slightly above the midline and towards the toe is associated with lower spin rates. The spectrum of attack angles and therefore launch angles that directly impact on spin rates together with an individual swing speed are wide and varied. And therefore, when it comes to figuring out the best launch angles and spin rates for different driver swing speeds, there are clearly a few variables that need to be considered at the same time. So when it comes to answering the question of what the best launch angles and ideal spin rates are for driver distance for players with different swing speeds, there is clearly no one answer that applies to everyone. The optimal launch condition numbers that produce maximum driver distance change for each player, and indeed they also change for each club. Thankfully, TruSpec Golf, Golf.com's sister company and one of the world's leaders in custom club fitting and building, have done the hard work for us in combination with TrackMan. This table highlights the ranges of launch angles and spin rates that they indicate are best for golfers with different driver swing speeds, from below 70, 70 miles an hour to 105 miles an hour and above. As with any generic launch condition stats, however, everyone is always at pains for golfers to remember that recommended guideline numbers can only ever be just that, a recommended guide. This data, for example, does not highlight the different angles of attack that they cover, and if you therefore find yourself not fitting neatly into these buckets, it doesn't automatically mean your current launch angles and spin rates are wrong when it comes to working out what will let you hit the ball as far as you can. Taking a look at these more detailed TrackMan launch condition numbers, we can quickly see how for golfers with very different angles of attack, from 5 degrees through to minus 5 degrees, the optimal launch angles and spin rates vary significantly for golfers of the same swing speed. Because when a golfer has a negative angle of attack, for example, more loft is required to launch the ball high. But if you increase the loft without changing the attack angle, you generate more spin, and that reduces the smash factor and therefore the distance you hit the ball. And not only do golfers have different attack angles, but they also have different release patterns, preferences, and all sorts of other swing vagaries that impact their optimal launch condition numbers that maximize how far they hit their driver. So as we can clearly see, there are a few elements that have to be factored in when it comes to assessing what is the best launch angle and spin rate for distance for different golfers. It is important to remember though that for all the data that modern launch monitors have given us to help us more tangibly analyse what every player needs to do to hit the ball as far as they can, it is also easy to get lost in a sea of numbers and potentially make an already complicated game even more so. In short therefore, when it comes to the ideal launch conditions for golfers, you can instead choose to keep in mind straightforward mantras to help you drive the ball as far as you can. Launch it high and spin it low or tee it high and let it fly are two good ones, for example. For players with slower driver swing speeds, it can also help simply to remind yourself that for most driver distance, you must get the ball up in the air as quickly as possible, because spin rate has less effect in the flight of the ball at low speeds, and therefore launch angle then becomes the main factor for optimising distance. Another straightforward way to spot if your spin rate is potentially too high, and therefore causing you to lose distance, is to just watch the height of your tee shots. Drives hit with a lot of backspin tend to rise very high into the air. Whatever your swing speed and standard of play, however, we would always recommend getting a lesson or going to a recognised club fitter to help you understand and achieve the optimal balance of launch angle and spin rate based on your driver's swings and ball speed that will maximise your driver distance. 
it will cost you less money per extra yard in the long run. So that's it for this look at ideal launch angles and spin rates. As ever and most importantly, we hope you're enjoying your golf. And if you like this video, tap on one of those boxes on the screen and we'll see you over in another one shortly.